Zen of social media marketing guru. <laughs> I am so excited, Shama Haida, for you to be here in Toronto during Anoki 13. You were one of our awardees at the event. Mm -hmm. How did it feel to come down and be honored yet again, since you have a slew of awards <laughs> to your um, portfolio already? How did it feel, though, to get this particular one from your community? Yeah, you know, Raj, it's, it's really the word that comes to mind is spectacular. Because while there have been a, a lot of honors and just a, a lot of great things that you know the community has bestowed at large, my industry especially, something of this nature is different, right? It's the, it's the South Asian culture, it's that community, it's what you grow up with. And for that community to look back and say, hey, what you've done, we find worthy is it really is spectacular and it's just been fantastic. Oh my gosh, you know, and it's really great to hear people like yourself who have accomplished so much in what seems to be a short span of time, mm -hmm. but really isn't because yeah. your journey started when literally you left India at the age of nine with mm -hmm. your parents yeah. and your parents had, you know, the humble, you know, immigrant story yeah. coming to Dallas, Texas and literally starting from scratch. Totally, right? totally. You know, and it's funny because I consider myself, an, I'm, I'm an immigrant. I'm not even first generation. I moved here when I was nine. I speak Hindi fluently. Yes. I'm still very attached to, to my culture. So it was a huge shift for me. I mean, I didn't. I, I wasn't born in the U.S. I wasn't born in the West, and really was sort of emerging. And I was a latchkey kid. Yes, really latchkey kid is where you're like <laughs> open the key when your your parents aren't home because they're working. So yeah, my parents worked you know full time jobs, blue collar jobs when they first came to the states. I was responsible for my younger sister. So not only was I dealing with this huge cultural change and shift as an immigrant, I also had all these responsibilities because back home it was family and being supported by the sort of larger community, right? This is, this is, which is nice because this feels kind of reminiscent yes. of that, of being an adult and having that kind of warmth from your community and then being just fully responsible for my younger sister and, and making sure that we had our meals on time. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, gotten, got to school on time. And so it was just like growing up very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. But I think that taught you a great kind of discipline which has traveled through your school and university years that kind of yeah. took you through the momentum the momentum of your um, fabulous career so far. Of course, we're going to talk about momentum, but before we get there, I want to actually touch base on the fact that you really are one of the pioneers of the, the entire kind of social media world that we now are all, mm -hmm. you know, needing to be a part of, even if we're not, right? Tell me how you had the foresight that that really was going to blow up at the time when you finished school in 2008 and, yeah. and started your blog, <laughs> right? So, yeah, it was actually really funny because I joked that when I got out of school, I couldn't get a job and feel like, oh, because jobs didn't exist. And, and that was true. This was like the worst recession time since the Great Depression and graduating. But I think what was really different was that industry didn't exist. Yes. Right? You talked to people and they were like, what's Twitter? <laughs> or like Facebook, something my 13-year-old uses. This is never going to be something that picks up pace. And I was like, you know what? I just, I saw it differently, I think. And so, you know, I did my thesis on Twitter when I had a few thousand users. And I just saw this whole landscape kind of ahead. And I think all of us have some sort of unique gifts that we're born with that we hone over time. And I think mine has been in some ways this foresight that you speak of, at least in the, at least in the tech space, right? <laughs> so not psychic by any means, but definitely I think when it comes to technology and marketing and, and the business world, I kind of sometimes can see what's around the bend. And mm. with that, with social, I just thought, this is gonna change the world. And this is before dictatorships were overthrown, right, in, in, in Egypt and so forth, using social media. This was before, I mean, the Twitter being faster than the API. So right. a very different world. And I'm just, uh, I'm just so grateful that I think I had even the support at that time of my graduate advisors of my university to say, hey, go forth and explore this new terrain. Shama, you actually did something really incredible that I'm not sure if this was a strategic move for you or if it was kind of like this organic growth thing that you saw yeah. happening um, and, you know, with you having kind of the insight you had with social, your blog within a year turned into this incredible company, an agency, yeah. full bore for social. Um, and, you know, really since then, and this is like, what, 2009, now we're sitting in 2016, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and yeah. um, year after year after year, I, you know, what I've read, and you'll have to tell me, you've had like a 400% growth 
what does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> what does that even mean to means, us, like, you know, yeah, normal people? It means the company just grew really fast. It started with, with me, myself, and I, and my dog. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we have 30 people now. We serve an international clientele. And it's, it's changed a lot, obviously. But it's funny because, you know, Raj, when I started, a lot of people start agencies, if you're not familiar with that world, after you have 20, 30 years at a firm or yes. you've got a good you know role of clients and you kind of move over and do your own thing and that's common remember i started my company at 22 yes. 23 so that means no network yeah. <laughs> no connections no money yes. right nothing i mean this is like what it, all i had was what's here Absolutely. and what i was willing to, to work hard for and so it's i had no like you know no clients i could pull in or or just even people I could call up. I, so I knew the only way I could grow the company to, to really do anything was to out-educate, mm. to out-educate competitors. Right? So I had to be smart in some ways. And one of my favorite phrases is, and you'll, you'll like this, Raj, I know you will, it's called strategic serendipity. Oh my God, right? I do love it. I know exactly I what you're saying. I know exactly <laughs> what it is because it's like, okay, you're going to be strategic in certain ways and then hope that the universe helps you along, right? Yes. With that momentum, it'll, it'll, if you start taking the steps in that direction, like the universe conspires for you. So I would go to, for example, these conferences when I first started and I, like, I wasn't even old enough to get into Vegas. It was really funny, but these conferences <laughs> would be, in Vegas, I would take like a friend's ID, I would get in, uh, <laughs> and not to like gamble or drink, but to attend these conferences. And I would take notes in the sessions and then I would offer my notes to my the attendees and be like, hey, if you want to give me your email, I will send you the notes from these sessions or I will put it on the blog, you know? That is and so, so smart. It was like, but it was one of those things where I was like, okay, and so I've got to, I've got to educate people and that's going to be my only platform because I got nothing else. Yes, <laughs> you know? absolutely. I got nothing else and no pedigree from a big agency, no list that I'm bringing with me. You know, I'm, I mean, literally, I'm just a kid, yes. right? Like a kid with a blog and a dog, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's what <laughs> that sort of thing and, and but lo and behold that's how we we got our first clients and you know we've, we've never looked back so. who was your first client and why do you think that they took you on so it was really funny our first clients was this premium dog food brand um, called canine cuisine and they were so fantastic and the CEO's name is Anthony he was this amazing guy who looked at our stuff and looked at my blog and was like you know what I let's let's do this and I just, I remember thinking that I was fooling him, thinking I was older, right? Because I was like, he couldn't have possibly known like my age until one day he called me and I guess some other prospect had talked to him and said, we're thinking about hiring marketing zen, what do you think? And so as he's talking to me, he's like, oh, and you were just talking about your age. And he's like, how old are you? And I was so, I was like, I do not want to tell this guy my age because it's never, you know, and I thought about all the ways I could answer this because I'd always been like in my 20s. Mm -hmm. I would never give Great away. Answer. Yeah, like at my age. And so finally it just, it was like to the point where I was like, uh, 23, you know, and he's like 23. And I'm like, man, he's, this whole charade is just going to come tumbling down. He's going to say, we should have never hired you. Well, you know, I didn't know that. And, but when I said that, it was really funny because he was like, oh, that's what I thought. Mm. You know, and I was like, why? <laughs> but you know what I, why I think that that worked in your favor is that, you know, really you're an expert w um, with the millennial mm. generation, um, the most powerful generation when it comes to the world of employment, right? Yeah, yeah, and being a digital native, right? And yeah. sort of, I mean, to him, that, that's what the feedback he gave me was. It was like, listen, this wasn't secondary. You didn't pick this up somewhere along the later on in life. You you grew up with this like yes. this technology is second nature to you and he's like that was one of the reasons we went with you guys and i just never thought about it that way right. you know so this whole time i'm thinking it's like this negative thing it's a bad thing but you know after that i just really decided to own it mm -hmm. and, and honestly we never looked back from there that's where like and that's where i felt like all that support the community support kind of outpouring as a young entrepreneur right yes. business week named us to their top 25 under 25 list and yes. just all this love that I never expected that I was, you know, <laughs> that I just, I, yeah, if you'd asked me if this is what it would look like, I couldn't have told you this. Well, it, it's, it's a part of what you said, strategic and serendipity, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it's interesting with that, that you actually chose to brand your company with the word Zen. You know I need to ask you. Yeah. I, I mean, I can tell, you know, by your personality that there's this kind of 360 approach to who you are as a woman, mm -hmm. right? I feel that that has really lent to how you've created your brand and why you decided to call it Zen. Share that with our viewers. Why Zen? 
Yeah, and it's funny, the brand's expanded so much too. You know, so when Zen started, it was the book, the Zen of social media marketing. That's like company marketing Zen, now it's Zen Media. And so it, it's really blossomed. And for me, you know, people do ask like the Zen, it's like, is it a Buddhist thing? It's a religious thing? I'm like, no, absolutely not. For me, it's, it is how I live life. Yes. And it's this idea of going with the flow. Yes. But even with like social media, technology, the, what, whatever we do in the digital age, it's so much easier when we go with the flow, when there's no, you know, there's no feedback, there's no pressure, right? There's no pushback. Yes. And so to me, that's really the Zen way. It's kind of going with the tools, working within the ecosystem, utilizing the assets to the best of our ability. And like when you do that, I, f I really do feel like the universe conspires. Absolutely. For you. <laughs> the, the universe has definitely conspired towards you, my darling. You, you have a slew of, um, you know, awards and they just keep coming and you're a keynote speaker. <laughs> like, knock on yeah, one. <laughs> like you're a keynote speaker t and, and that's really interesting for me and I feel that, you know, the zen of social media marketing when mm. you came out with that, I feel that that was a really strategically smart move for you to actually put, you know, it, I, I feel it really helped catapult your position as an expert in social mm -hmm. really well and the book is you know it's like a textbook for yeah. social you know at universities yeah. and stuff right now yeah was I mean, it a strategic move for you i'm really interested in knowing that so again strategic serendipity right okay. and, and it's like for the fourth now going into its fourth edition it kind of blows my mind yeah and what i mean by that is i'm an entrepreneur at heart i know how to meet market demand so for me it was people need to know how to use social media there's really nothing out there that's tactical. I can even point them to something and say, oh, check out this book. What book? Right. <laughs> what book? What industry? So uh, there was just one book out there at the time. It was so theoretical. So I remember writing it and thinking, OK, this fulfills the demand because we can't help everybody that comes to our door. Right? We work with different types of clients and companies. And I wish we could help everyone. And that's just not feasible. Right. And so the book was a really good alternative to say, OK, you can start here. This is a good good primer. So, you know, I wrote that in a very strategic way, mm -hmm. fulfilling market demand. But the way it got picked up was very serendipitous. Yes. Right? It's funny, my agent found me on Twitter and said, and we'd only traded like mundane tweets before this, like, how's the weather in New York? Great. How's Dallas? The stuff that you look at and you're like, oh, that's just noise. Right. You know, but it helped us build that relationship. So when I did publish my book on Twitter with like just a PDF originally, I self-published it. Uh, Janet, who's my who's my agent, saw that and said, "Did you know I'm a literary agent? Like, have you ever considered publishing it?" And of course, I true to millennial me, I was like, "Well, I just did publish it." <laughs> 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 what do you mean? It's out there. Like, you can buy it, Janet. It's published. <laughs> and she was like, "Okay, in bookstores, you know, like a real author." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh yeah, I think that would be fun." And that's how I got my my agent yes. for my book. And then oddly enough, my publisher found my agent on Twitter. You believe that? Like, and he's my my publisher is also in Dallas, which is where I'm from. They connected on Twitter. They had coffee in New York when they met, and she said, "Oh, you have an author in Dallas. Like, you guys should connect. You should see if this is." So it's so funny because, like, so yes, in that way, very serendipitous yes. as to how the book deal. And literally, like, two weeks after they met, I had a book deal. Oh my god! And I'd signed with a publisher, and you know, I'd never done a book before, and <laughs> it, was a, it was a big risk for for the publisher to take on me, for the agent to take on me, and and all these things. So yeah, I think it's about like, you do the right things and then you hope that that momentum will carry you forward. Absolutely, and it's definitely carried you forward, um, Shama. The really interesting thing is, from the story that you just shared here, um, is that you are an example of, you know, a success story in the realm of social. Like mm -hmm. you, I mean, look what you just talked about. You yeah. actually got picked up through social. Yeah. So yeah. now, you know, it kind of makes sense that you're selling that same success story that you, that you yourself have accomplished. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, it's funny. People think of social, I think they think like, they think Twitter or Facebook or these networks, but really social is so much bigger today, Raj. I mean, social so tell is, us that, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, social is people being the media. Mm. That's what it is. It's not media being media in the traditional sense, right? It's not this newspaper conglomerate. It's it's niche. It's it's supporting people. It's it's really everyone having their own network right. and being. So how do you leverage the fact that people are the media? And that really, to me, is 
is social media. That's really the broader picture. Right, right. And you know, you actually work, your company, um, of course, works with clients around mm -hmm. the world. You did mention that um, mm -hmm. earlier. But it's interesting that it goes all the way from Fortune 500 companies yeah. to like the small company around the corner that could be just a non-for-profit yeah. and everyone in between. Yeah. Tell me how you pick the clients that you want to work with. Yeah, so that's a good question. So we, I'd say the majority of our clients are like fast-growing startups or um, middle market, privately held companies. And what we look for is companies that are successful, but they want to be at the pinnacle, right? They, they're they doing well, but what they want is to have the industry thought leadership status. They want to be household names, and that's where we come in. So for us, like, if a company's already doing the right stuff, but they've like, we know we can amplify that and get them to the next level. Right, absolutely. For those companies out there that really don't know how to get their handle around um, social media marketing, I mean, you know, what what is it that you feel they need to do first, right? Because you're talking about kind of yeah. like that middle that middle yeah. ground. What about those people like, you know, the the, the um, you know the local. Yeah, you know, woman entrepreneur sure, that has yeah. kind of like this new little product, or she has few little skills. Yeah, she's got this blog out there, and and there's this world of social media that's scary as hell for most yeah, of us. Yeah, of course. What would you say to those types of um, people because they really are the future, yeah. right? Yeah, for yeah. entrepreneurship. Yeah, so Talk I would to me say, about that. You know, I would say that you have to look at social media as part of a, a picture. It can't be the end all and be all of things. And what I mean by that is, it's an amplifier. When something is good, it gets amplified to amazing. And when something is average, it gets amplified to like uh, poor, right? So right. think about a restaurant. I mean, even if it's a hole in the wall shop, but like the food is great. Or, or let's say the food's just even good. We don't ever go out and say, oh, the food's good. What do we say? The food's amazing. Yes. Right? The food's amazing. It's worth like the two hour wait. The lines are on the corner because we're storytellers. That's who we are as human beings. And if it's not so great, what do we say? Oh yeah, I'm not gonna eat there again. Oh, it's terrible. Like, two hour wait for this thing and then right, everything changes but so what I would say for anybody starting out is with social think of it as an amplifier mm -hmm. it's a great visibility platform distribution platform but it's not a substitute for the message so the medium is not the substitute right. for the message right. it's really important to make sure you have your brand in place what are you offering what's your differentiator because so many people take something average and they're just they want to you know they want social to make it big but that's not how it works you have to start with the right principles, the right kind of elements, right? that kind of gets amplified to, to something awesome. And then consistency, Raj, this mm -hmm. is so important. Like if I tell every, if I could tell all business owners out there one thing that's like the ticket to marketing success or business success, it's consistency. Yes. It's not the stuff that you do one off, it's the stuff you do day in and day out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's so important and people forget because we live in an age of instant, right? So Absolutely. we insta celebrity, instant everything, but just because some a message is we have the ability for something to go out instantly doesn't mean that you build a brand instantly. And people, I mean, people look at me, they say like, oh, this is so great, you just came out of nowhere. I'm like, I've been doing this for a while now. Right. You know, and there's lots of like 2 a.m. mornings where you're working away on something and you're, uh, you know, you're problem solving things. And so it is, it's just so important to be consistent. Absolutely. And you've been consistent. You came out with your, <laughs> so your sophomore publication, Momentum. Mm -hmm. How was that um, different from what you did with Zen of Social Media Marketing. Yeah. So the Zen of Social Media Marketing and Momentum both came about from demand, right? They're both demand books. And, and Zen came out at a time where people needed tactical, they needed a primer, and they still do, which is why it's you know, sold over 50,000 copies and it's now in its fourth edition. And so that is a tactical book. And you know, Raj, funny thing happens when you write a book and it does well, the question people ask you is, when's your next book? Absolutely. It's like the biggest thing you get asked, but, but it took you me, waited a long time. It took me a couple of years because I didn't want to write something that had already been said. The reason I knew Zen did well was because it met demand and it had no one was saying it yet. And I thought, there's if I just say something someone else is saying, then it makes no difference. And I don't want to clutter people's bookshelves. Like I'm a reader first. Right. Right. An author second. And so as a reader, I'm like, what do I want to read? What do I appreciate? And so it took a couple of years, and then I started seeing this new trend. Now people weren't confused about the tools. They got the tools, or right. at least to some degree understood. Like you weren't explaining to them why it was important, or they got it, right? right. Now they'd kind of seen the power, and so they were drinking the Kool-Aid. Now was they're overwhelmed. There's this whole different ecosystem to work in. Now it's a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. So the rules have changed. 
And so what are those rules? And hence momentum comes in. Right. So momentum is much more of a strategic book, much more focused on these sort of broader principles of what it takes to succeed in marketing in the digital age. Wow, and that's, that one is based on your experience. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're also a um, tremendous keynote speaker. You're always traveling around the world. I follow you on um, you know, all your social oh, feeds thanks. and sometimes <laughs> you're here, sometimes you're there. Tell me why the keynote circuit yeah. is something that you value because I know that, you know, off camera, you've mentioned to me how important yes. kind of the feedback is yes. from the public. Yes. So talk to me about that. I mean, the, the stage is everything. You know, it's really funny because I, I do think of myself in that way it, uh, as a performer. But also, it's, it's experiential, but it's also an experiment. The feedback you get from the audience. There's so many trends that I get to see, pick up on, just by interacting with people on, on a larger scale. And then being able to take best practices, stuff that we're seeing with clients and apply it like that, yes. that's amazing. I mean, to me, like being on stage, connecting with audiences, sharing my expertise, like I'm sure you can't tell, but I'm relatively passionate about this. <laughs> you know, and it's for no. some people that might be like, marketing, business, law. I'm like, yes, yeah, this you is know, no like thing. this is my thing and yeah. I love it. And, being able, like, what's the, what do you, what happens when you love something? You want to share that, right? Absolutely. So for me, the speaking thing has always come naturally, and people were like, wow, you can tell that you really enjoy this. And I'm like, you know, it's because of the topic, too. Right. Because if you told me to stand here and talk about astronomy, for example, I'd be like the worst speaker. Of the world. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, because I, it's not, I, I don't know much about that. Yeah. Um, I couldn't point out like constellations <laughs> or whatever. But so yeah, I think it's a mix of knowing my subject having experience and expertise and being able to share that and just give a, a broader platform. I love, I love sharing, I love learning from people and I think all these sort of mass platforms, whether it's the stage, whether it's camera, they allow you to do that, right? Right, absolutely. And that, there's something great about that. Absolutely. What's next for you? What's next? Well, taking over the world, of, of course. course. Haven't world you already domination. Done, haven't you already done that? <laughs> um, well, I will tell you, you know, the, the Inoki event and, and being here has felt like a real pinnacle. So I, I appreciate that very, very much. And it does. We appreciate you. Thank you. And it keeps me going, right? So it's the momentum to keep doing, to m keep moving forward. I think of Inoki this way, and I think this also feels, is, is reflective of how I, I feel in, in my personal life and in work. It's like for those who have arrived, but are not nearly done. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah girlfriend, <laughs> I love that. So I, I don't I think you'll about. ever be done. No. I just, no. I, I just know you'll never be done. Yeah. And I think it's th these. This is kind of like the common denominator DNA I find with people who are hyper successful is they never really um, dwell on their success because they're always looking for the next thing they can do yeah. to actually give out there to the yes. world. And yes. that is truly a part of yes. who you are. Yeah, so I think it's feeling like in the, the feeling of having arrived as, as a sense of like, you go from this immigrant kid, right? You could never have dreamt of like doing the things I'm doing. And like just, I don't think I had the capacity to, and so life has been very good to me in that regard. And so feeling like, hey, I've been able to learn and share and give and build something. Yes. So one of the things that gives me so much pleasure is the people we support, the company, mm -hmm. you know, the people we hire, their families, the companies we support, how they're able to grow. And so to like people's livelihoods and like that gives me a rush, right? Absolutely. Being able to support, doing things like that. But you're right, I'm never done. So growing the company, building more platforms out. You know, we now have the one of the only Facebook live shows on business on Facebook. Wow. And we moved it from, from YouTube to Facebook and we do that every Friday and, and that's hundreds and thousands of viewers on of that course. thing. So it's been really cool. And so you know, it just expanding what I love, which is business technology marketing, and then finding different outlets for it. Absolutely. And I think, you know, what that looks like, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I couldn't even tell you what that looks like in five years because five years ago I couldn't have told you that I was going to be sitting here with you. Absolutely. But the strategic serendipity is I'll keep working my tail off. Yes. And <laughs> with your dog? With my with my dog, right? <laughs> yes, pun intended. Yes, yes. With two little guys now, Snoopy oh and Teddy. So I've oh, got I love two that. little wagging tails sitting by <laughs> me and they're like, Mommy, more treats. <laughs> work harder, mommy, work harder. Oh, I love and it. so <laughs> They're great little guys. And so, yeah, I think it's the sense of I want to keep doing more and giving more. And uh, I do, I will tell you, there is pressure 
to mm -hmm. give back more as I grow as well because I've always believed to whom much is given, much is expected. Yes. And I'm very cognizant of that. So I think certainly more um, nonprofit work, maybe yes. some advisory board work as well in the future to be able to give back at that level. Well, I think that anybody that has you and Zen and everything that you do as, as part of their lives would be really lucky because okay. not yeah. only are they getting someone that's an expert in that um, realm, but someone that has a heart. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and I really appreciate the time that you Thank spent you, with me. Such a I can't wait until you come back and tell me more about what's going to be happening with you. Of um, you you got to come back and chat with me. I know that my I viewers will. would love to hear more about your tremendous organic um, strategic serendipity, serendipity yes <laughs> and, and just all, all of what that means okay yeah. I want to hear more about maybe that. that'll be the name of my third book oh, oh. <laughs> well I hope it's not going to take you four years to no write that. it won't it won't okay thank you so much my darling thank you Rod such a pleasure thank you